Now, as you know, we're no stranger to the crusade against wet markets here on Drive Time. Those unhygienic animal killing fields found not just in China, but Indonesia and Thailand, of course, as well. And they are at the centre of this pandemic as the suspected origin point of the disease. Now, the good news is, is that global pressure has been building upon governments and international bodies to universally condemn and ban these aberrations of infection and taste. And now a charity based in the US has turned up the heat even more. This week, Animal Wellness Action worked with the US Senate's very high-profile US Senators Cory Brooker, Booker of the Democrats and Lindsey Graham of the Republicans to help secure more than 60 lawmakers who signed a letter sent to the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and a World Organization for Animal Wealth, OIE, calling for a global ban on wet markets like the one in Wuhan, where COVID-19 jumped the species barrier to the human race. So I'm joined now by Wayne Pachali, who is the founder and president of Animal Wellness Action. Wayne, I was so pleased when I heard about this letter because it feels like finally maybe American politicians, high-profile American politicians, are starting to take this seriously. Cory Booker, Lindsey Graham, big names, and they could make a real difference here. So, so tell me about the political pressure that's coming in America, because unfortunately, I hate to tell you, Wayne, not enough people are talking about these wet markets in the UK, and I'm furious about that. Well, we've been rightly talking about containment, of the disease because it's such an obvious human health issue. It's right in front of us. But a discussion that omits the origins of this crisis is going to invite the next one. And the wet Indeed. markets in 2000, yeah, the wet markets in 2002 and three in China spawned the SARS virus, which became an epidemic, not a pandemic, but nonetheless killed 700 people. And we hollered and we pounded the table. We raised our hands and said, my God, stop these wet markets. They're going to incubate the next virus that's going to hopscotch around the planet. And of course, that's now what's happened. If we don't learn this second lesson, we're fools. Mm. And I'm very, very encouraged by uh, Senator Booker and Senator Graham. And the roster of other lawmakers is really a who's who of, of who's leading both major American parties. We have some of the most liberal members in the United States, you know, more on the left. And we've got some of the most conservative members on the right. So this really represents now an emerging political consensus in the United States that we've got mm. to do something domestically about the trade in wildlife, yep. but also we've got to do something about multilateral institutions like the World Health Organization to stop this everywhere. And what I love about the letter, and it's something that I've had to do on this show too, and I apologise in advance for it, is that it talks specifically in language that people understand about the horror of these wet markets. So I just wanted to read a little bit from the letter. It says, market vendors cage animals of different species in close proximity where the animals are likely to urinate, defecate and potentially bleed or salivate on the animals below them. The risk to food buyers can also be through the slaughter of animals in front of customers, releasing disease, carrying fluids like blood, saliva and excrement into the air, which can then splash or splatter on nearby people, be consumed or inadvertently inhaled by humans. And I know it's grim and I know it's hard to talk about, Wayne, but actually we have to think about this, don't we? Because this is why we're here that type of revolting hygiene. It's a vivid description, but it bears, um, you know, very little resemblance to the true horror of what happens to these poor animals. I mean, taken from the wild, um, you know, the babies taken from their mothers uh, in transport, put out, watching others slaughtered in front of them for a particular taste, like eating a pangolin or a civet cat or a bat. 
this is horrific. I know. And, and if bats, we, if, bats, if we don't respond now, yes. I know. Well, bats, I'm, I'm really glad you raised bats because also you make it very, very clear in this letter, or, or Senator Brooker and, and, and Senator Graham make it very, very clear in this letter that bats are, are a particular issue. In the past 45 years, at least five pandemics have been traced back to eating bats. Stop eating bats, people. Stop selling bats to be eaten, people. And I'm sorry, the Chinese government have to understand that it's simply unacceptable. This is not something that they've been doing for decades and decades. They have to tell their people, stop eating and stop selling bats for consumption by human beings. Five pandemics. It can't go on. No, you're you're right, and and uh, that is the most high-profile species that has spawned pandemics. But so many others are out there, and it's this human interface with wildlife. You know, wildlife belong in the wild. These animals are wonderful and incredible. They make our planet rich and diverse. They need to live in their habitats, and we shouldn't be exploiting them and treating wild animals like a farmed animal. We shouldn't be putting them in live animal markets. We shouldn't be trafficking in their gallbladders if they're bears. There are so many aspects of this wildlife trade. And I think one incredible thing about the letter from so many Republicans and Democrats is that they're asking for an end to the trade in wildlife, wildlife all over the world. This will go beyond wet markets and spare wildlife so many forms of suffering that humans mete out to them. Well, congratulations on your great work. Please do keep me posted because I'm passionate about this. And I can tell you, Wayne, the British people are very much behind the eradication of these wet markets. When I spoke about it on this show and I then wrote a column about it in the Sun newspaper, which is the biggest newspaper <clears throat> in the country, the response I had was overwhelming. Sadly, what we don't have yet in this country is many high-profile politicians picking up the mantle and talking about it. So please keep me posted with your work. That is Wayne Pichali, the founder and president of Animal Wellness Action. Thank <laughs> you.